Down on the corner, out in the street, Willie and the poor boys are playing Bring a Nickel, Tap Your Feet. Their songs are classics. Their sound is unmistakable. They gave us hits like Have You Ever Seen the Rain, Proud Mary, and Down on the Corner. The story of Credence Clearwater Revival is not unlike most bands. A group of friends made amazing music together, couldn't get past their differences, and eventually broke up. But what they left behind was a timeless catalog of songs that are fun, toe-tapping, and body-grooving. Fourteen-year-olds John Fogarty, Doug Clifford, and Stu Cook were all classmates in Berkeley, California. They teamed up with 18-year-old Tom Fogarty, John's older brother, to form the group The Blue Velvets. Thinking that name was more 1950s than 60s, though, they changed their name to the Gollywogs. That was short-lived, too, though, because both Clifford and John were drafted for military duty. When they got back together in 1967, they agreed they needed a new name and settled on Credence Clearwater Revival. That phrase actually has no specific meaning. Credence came from one of Tom's friends, Credence Newball. Clearwater came from a beer commercial for Olympia Beer, and Revival was what they wanted to do after their short hiatus, revive their band and music careers. So Credence Clearwater Revival, often called CCR, was reborn and ready to rock and roll. And rock and roll they did. CCR produced a string of hits in the coming years, starting with Suzy Q. This was actually their only top 40 single to not be written by John Fogarty. Instead, the credit goes to Dale Hawkins, one of the founding fathers of Swamp Rock Boogie that inspired the band and defined their southern rock sound. John Fogarty wrote, produced, arranged, and sang nearly all of CCR's songs. He carried a notebook around, full of phrases he wanted to turn into songs, like Bad Moon Rising, Born on the Bayou, Proud Mary, Up Around the Bend, and Riverboat Queen. CCR had five singles in the U.S., hit number two. No other artist has had so many number two singles without ever topping the charts at number one for a single. 1969 was a banner year for CCR. They produced three platinum albums that reached the top ten, Bayou Country, Green River, and Willie and the Poor Boys. This also included four hit singles, charting at two and three respectively. They played at Woodstock. However, John Fogarty was displeased with their performance. They played at 3 a.m. after The Grateful Dead and would not allow it to be included on the documentary or the soundtrack commemorating the event. They also performed on The Ed Sullivan Show. Nineteen seventy brought two more albums, Cosmos Factory and Pendulum, along with a cover story in Rolling Stone magazine. John, however, was the only member of the band interviewed for the feature. Success begets jealousy, and the internal rifts grew. Tom was unhappy that John both had so much control and wanted so much control. By 1971, Tom Fogarty had had enough and quit the band. The remaining members debated about a replacement for him. Ultimately, though, they decided to remain a trio and continued making music together. But creative differences, conflict with the label, and their poorly received album Mardi Gras imploded the band. CCR officially called it quits in October of 1972. 25 years later, in the Swedish magazine Pop, John Fogarty said this about the breakup. I was alone when I made that music, alone when I made the arrangements, alone when I added background vocals, guitars. I was alone when I produced and mixed the albums. The other guys showed up only for rehearsals and the day we made the actual recordings. For me, Credence was like sitting on a time bomb. The other guys in the band insisted on writing songs for the new album, 
They had opinions on the arrangements. They wanted to sing. It sounded awful. That's when I understood I had a choice to make. There was a big row. I remember that I very clearly told the others. We had to make the best possible album. And it wasn't important who did what, as long as the result was the very best we could achieve. And of course, I was the one who should do it. The result was 8 million selling double-sided singles in a row and 6 albums, who all went platinum. And Melody Maker had us as the best band in the world. That was after the Beatles split, but still. And I was the one who had created all this. They were obsessed with the idea of more control and more influence. So finally, the bomb exploded and we never worked together again. Both of the Fogarty brothers went on to have solo careers, while Clifford and Cook worked together later on, forming Credence Clearwater Revisited. They reunited a few times over the years, for Tom's 1974 album Myopia, and also for his wedding in 1980. Clifford, Cook, and John played together at their high school reunion in 1983, but the rest of the 80s and 90s brought a slew of lawsuits against one another and their management. When CCR was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993, John refused to play with Clifford and Cook. The two were not allowed on stage while John played with some other people, including Bruce Springsteen. Insulted and frustrated, Cook and Clifford walked out. Tom's widow, Trisha, had actually brought Tom's ashes in an urn to the ceremony, believing there would be a reunion. While the ending of Clearance Clearwater Revival isn't pretty, their music sure was. It's the soundtrack to so many seasons of our lives. Bruce Springsteen said of CCR, Credence wasn't the hippest band in the world, but they were the best. Thanks for watching Jukebox Jams. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story about musical legends.